Hi, this is David at Splunk, and today I'm going to be walking through a new app I wrote called Splunk Predict. Um, the purpose of this app is to basically demonstrate that you can train Splunk to learn field values based on other field values. So the reasons you'd want to do this are sometimes your data is noisy and you don't trust it, such as when uh, humans enter values. So if you think about uh, humans filling out forms, um, you'd like to predict uh, values and you can use that to determine if the human made an error. So for example, if they said uh, San Francisco, California, and they entered a zip code that was not from California, um, by training it on you know cities and states uh, and zip codes, it could learn what zip codes are in California and then it could predict it. And that's not a great example because clearly you could just look that up. But in other cases, such as right here, I have where based on a name, uh, it would predict the gender. So this app does not have any user interface other than uh, a help screen. And But the, 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 the meat of the app is basically a couple of new search commands. There's a train command and a guess command and a couple of others. So what you do is you basically run a search. Uh, you don't need this fields, but I, I wanted to limit it to what data was available to the trainer. Uh, if you don't limit the number of fields, it will use all fields. Um, and it's basically saying, I want you to learn uh, based on all the fields that I know, which are basically just name. I want you to learn uh, what the gender is. So. This will basically, from the name, it'll determine someone's gender, uh, such as Dave would be masculine and Sarah would be feminine and so on. Um, and once it's trained, you run another search and you basically just say, uh, guess the name of the model, so this is the name of the model, into gender. And so it will uh, basically fill in the gender field. Um, so you can use this for missing data. So if, if, for example, if you had Twitter data and uh, some of the tweets have the gender of the person and some don't, you could guess the gender of the person by first training it on those tweets that have a gender and then running it again to guess the gender based on the text of those tweets that do not have a gender. Um, and likewise, as I said before, you can use it to validate that uh, values are correct. Uh, if they're entered by humans or other things. Um, so it's on Splunk base. Uh, let's go to the app. So when you go to the app within Splunk, there's literally just a, a page that describes how to use it, uh, telling you about the train, guess, reset, and test commands. Um, and then you just click search and you go search like any other app. Um, here's a search that I've run and basically I'm searching Splunk's internal logs just as a demo. And what I do is I'm looking for events that have a log level and a message. And I want to predict what the log level is, the urgency of that this log, uh, based on just the message text. So if you see this event right here, I'm not using the info to predict info. <laughs> I'm using this part here, watched, uh, will begin reading. You can see right here the, the message field. We'll begin reading at offset, da da da, da right? So based on this text alone, I want it to learn info. And so it's going gonna, it's gonna to basically parse, uh, tokenize the, this text, and then it's going to determine which keywords indicate uh, are indicative of info and which keywords are indicative of warnings and so on. So on my search, I limited it just to log level and messages. Uh, for the sake of uh, simplicity, I deduped so that I only keep a thousand infos and a thousand warnings because I was getting way too many infos uh, and, and not enough warnings and errors and things like that. And then I basically said train. I want you to learn messages into, lo into levels uh, and put it uh, basically from the log level I want you to uh, predict. The log level is the value I want you to predict. And once you run this search, it goes and behind the scene builds a model that you can then use. So this is a long search, but it's basically to prove to you that it really is learning. Um, so I do again my same search. Uh, this time I said, let's get data from two days ago so that I'm not 
testing on the same data as that I trained on. Uh, I'm deduping messages just for uh, uh, simplicity of, of testing. Uh, same for deduping again of, uh, of a thousand different kinds of logs, of uh, log levels. But the, the gist of the test right here is I'm, I'm changing log level to original level. I'm removing the raw text so uh, to, just to prove that, it, that it's not uh, somehow cheating. I'm removing all the fields other than the original level and message. And then basically I'm saying, okay, I want you to guess the, uh, the log level from just message. And then I want to see what the top values are for the guess and what the real level was. And you see here, it did really well. Uh, it got 99% uh, right, basically. Uh, so most of the messages are info, and it predicted info. Uh, the warns, it got right. Now these two bottom ones, it got wrong. It confused uh, warn with info and info with warn three times out of a thousand. Not too bad. Um, and now what we can do is we can actually look at those situations. So same exact search, except we replaced the top command with the where. And I said where the guess does not equal the original value. And here, it's, it looked at this message and it said, this should probably be a warn and not an info. And I looked at this one and said the same thing. And in this one, it said the opposite. It said that this is a warn, but I think maybe it should be an info. Um, and these are somewhat reasonable guesses. And uh, it's actually kind of useful because you could imagine uh, there are some log levels uh, within Splunk that maybe should be changed. Um, so it's not... On some cases, you could use this kind of search to figure out problems where it, it didn't predict the right thing. And other times, you can use it to predict errors in your data itself, such as the log level being wrong or humans entering the wrong value in a form. Um, this app is, uh, is relatively uh, early. It uses a naive Bayes model, uh, so it's good with uh, text and... Uh, things like that. It is the basis of my sentiment analysis app. Um, it's not great for numerics and for uh, learning historical patterns and trends, but in predicting uh, some fields from other fields, it seems to be very good in a lot of situations. Um, another example was based on just the raw uh, text of an event. I was able to predict the source type with 99% accuracy. Um, and, uh, and I think it could be useful. So I, I would love feedback, suggestions, questions. Thank you very much. David at Splunk.